Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello friends, this is the second lecture on uh, justice and we have already have uh, had one lecture where we have discussed justice as a distributive concept and in that lecture we have discussed how uh, different criteria can be used for uh, distribution of resources, distribution of goods, distribution of opportunities and so on. Now the some of the criteria that we have discussed. Uh, like needs or um, desert, uh, freedom of choice or maximal, uh, maximization of utility or to benefit the least disadvantaged uh, sections in the society and so on. One of the contentious issue regarding this whole conception of justice as a distributive concept is that it talks about giving everyone's his or her due. Now, what should be that criteria of uh, giving everyone's his or her due? So, um, two uh, premise of such uh, process of giving everyone's uh, his or her due is this idea of desert, what we call also merit. So, individuals are responsible for his or her conditions in the life or the entitlements that he or she enjoys, that conditions or entitlement is the result of his or her action. And therefore, if there is inequalities in the society that is based on the individual skill, talent, capability or merit and so on, is justified and the principle for justification of that kind of status or entitlements is this desert, individual differ in their capability in their talent and a skill and therefore, the resulting inequality in society is justifiable. So, that is a kind of desert. So, individuals should not have the same level of living and so on, but they should uh, have different entitlements, different property depending upon their different capabilities and so on. The other principle for such uh, 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 process of giving uh, one's uh, dues is the idea of need. So, individual may have different needs. The society should ensure that the distribution of resources is allocated according to the needs of different people, different individuals, different sections of society and so on. So, these two remain one of the fundamental contentious issue in this um, idea of justice as a distributive concept. Now, today in this lecture, what we are going to do is in the first part, we will discuss the procedural and the substantive notion of justice and we will uh, carry from what we have discussed in this uh, distributive idea of justice. So, because both procedural to some extent is about uh, not uh, the outcome of uh, uh, the procedure, but about following a procedure which itself is just and the outcome of its implementation is not that important in assessing what is a just uh, theory or what is the uh, correct theory of justice and so on. And then we will discuss the substantial notion of uh, justice where the procedure are important. So, we must have a just procedure, but also we should be equally concerned about the just outcome that is the substantial theory of justice which we will discuss. And in the second part of today's lecture, we will discuss John Rawls theory of uh, justice as fairness and uh, in the next lecture we will discuss some of the critique to John Rawls theory of uh, uh, justice and then we move on to some other topics. Now, 
procedural theory of justice emphasize upon following just rule or procedure for ensuring justice. So, the focus or the emphasis of procedural theory of justice as the name suggests is about procedure and the rule which should be just. So, to ensure justice the uh, scholars and theorists will argue that we must have just procedure and just law. The assumption here is that if you have a uh, just theory or procedure for distribution of resources, it will naturally lead to the just outcome without any consideration to different contexts, geographical, historical, social or economic. The theory of justice could be applicable to all contexts universally without any consideration to the specificities of a particular context if we have a just theory. So, the whole uh, discourse on the positivist uh, tradition of law, constitution and so on is, uh, uh, is based on this fundamental premise of uh, theory or procedure or rules which will lead to just outcome in the society and so on. So, the procedural theory in that sense is emphasizing upon arriving at a just rule or just procedure and that will lead to the outcome. So, according to this theory result or outcome should not be the determining factor in uh, devising or uh, conceptualizing or constituting what is just or what is just uh, rule and procedure. So, this theory results or outcome of these procedures are not quite significant. So, the focus, the emphasis would be on the formation or formulation of a just theory and procedure. And if we arrive at this procedure or just theory, then the outcome will automatically be uh, uh, just. So, the outcome or the result should not be the determining factor in formulation of a just theory or procedure. So, whether a theory is just or not, it should not be determined or assessed by the outcome, but on the basis of the procedure or the formulation of theory itself. So, uh, the emphasis in the procedural theory of justice is about the procedure and not necessarily the outcome. So, the procedural theory of justice primarily focus on the individual. So, the assumption in the procedural theory of justice is the individual autonomy and liberty should be always protected and a state should have very minimum role in interfering with the autonomy and the liberty of the individual. And individuals should have maximum choice to make decisions or to develop his or her skill. And if such decisions and skills leads to different outcome, different results, then that society should be just. So, in that sense in the procedural theory, there is no a kind of end result or the end goal which should be applicable to everyone and which should be predetermined. Now, what should be the end and what should be the goal? These theorists will argue that individuals should be left and individual are best to decide. So, the procedural of theory primarily focus on the individual autonomy and liberty. It emphasizes on individual as rational being and aware of various choices that is available to them. The state should not interfere in the entitlements of the individual and the individual are responsible for their own actions and the consequences thereof. So, uh, the premise of this procedural theory of justice is the individual is a rational autonomous agent aware of his or her choices or uh, decisions and uh, the result or the consequences of uh, that decisions should be also rest with the individual himself and states should not interfere with uh, this uh, decision making or the opportunity or the choices that is available to the individual. The procedural theory of justice does not particularly focus on the distribution of goods, benefits and services in the society as is often argued in the distributive conception of justice. So, the idea of a procedural theory is to not focus on the uh, distribution or interference with the um, individual uh, autonomy or liberty, but to provide them the condition or the just condition for 
tell uh, maximization of their uh, uh, opportunities for the development of their talent and in that way society uh, role or the role of a state is minimal to ensure the implementation of just laws or just procedure. Everyone should operate within the um, framework of law or uh, just procedure and while following those uh, just procedure and law, we will discuss it in uh, Nozick, uh, the outcome should not be determined or predetermined by the state. So, Robert Nozick principle of justice is a very good example of this kind of procedural theory of justice. So, he put forward two principle of justice which is called historical or end state principle of justice. Now, he pointed out that the past actions and the choices or decisions that individual makes should determine his or her desert or entitlements and also the uh, distribution whether a state should actually uh, involve in distribution of um, resources or not will be determined by the actions of uh, past or the historical actions of individual and uh, the uh, entitlements that he or she achieve. So, uh, let it put it uh, this way, um, the individual is entitled to maximize, maximize his uh, property, to acquire more property, to have more entitlements and so on. Now, while doing so, the individual must be uh, uh, following or must follow certain procedure that is established. So, that is the just uh, 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 way of acquiring the property and so on. If the individual acquire his or her property by following the just procedure established by law or the state, then his acquiring of property or entitlements are just and a state should not interfere with his uh, resources or do not take uh, the responsibility of distribution among those who are uh, less well off and so on. Whereas, if the individual follow certain unjust or fall means for the acquiring of the property, then a state has the responsibility to correct the past mistakes, to redistribute and, and uh, so on. So, the historical um, actions or the choices is focusing upon the individual acquiring of the property uh, and if it is just, a state should not interfere. If it is unjust or acquired through fall means, then a state has the responsibility to redistribute those resources. So, in the end state principle, he emphasized that there should be certain goals or objectives to which the distribution pattern should look into and distribution of goods and benefits should be done accordingly. So, that is the end result principle which focuses on certain ends and objectives uh, to be achieved. So, Nozick explains how only a just acquisition of property leads to just transfer of property. So, if you remember in the equality also, we have discussed this idea of um, acquiring property in a just manner and its uh, transfer to the other individual is just if the uh, uh, holder has acquired his or her property in a just manner. So, the entitlement is not sufficient, but the process of that acquiring that entitlement or the transfer of that enti entitlements are equally significant. So, Nozick argue that a state should have a minimal role in distribution. For him, distribution is justified only when property is acquired by fall or unjust means. Otherwise, this state should have very uh, minimal role, uh, should not take the responsibility of distribution. If the uh, acquiring of property or entitlements by the individual are just, even if it is unequal in the society and so on. So, those inequalities in entitlements or rights are justified if such acquisition are on just principle or by following the just procedure established by law. If there is a fall, if there is unjust method for the acquiring that property, then a state has a role to take away that property and involve in the process of uh, redistribution, but otherwise a state should not interfere with the 
individual entitlements and property. Now, the substantive uh, justice in contrast to the procedural theory of justice also equally emphasize on the outcome or the just outcome in the society. So, the procedural theory of justice particularly focuses on following some procedures or rules to ensure justice, but the outcome of such procedure are not that important while assessing a theory of justice. So, the functioning or the assessment of a theory of justice is based on the procedure itself or the rule itself and it is argued that if a just rule is formulated or just procedure is formulated, then the outcome will necessarily be just. So, we do not have to take into account the outcome to understand a theory of justice, but we have to formulate a theory which is just in itself, then the outcome or the result will be taken care of on its own. So, however, in contrast to that, substantive theory do emphasize equally on how to get just result by applying just procedure. So, the procedure itself is not uh, sufficient, uh, we also need to equally emphasize on the just outcome. So, uh, one of the example that uh, I have used in one of my uh, lecture previously is this idea of applying, uh, so the premise of this rule that treat everyone equally appears to be just and it should work everywhere, so, we should treat everyone equally. Now, if a society is uh, not equal, if society is not equal, then if we apply this just rule of treating everyone equally may not lead to the just outcome that is everyone will not be on the same level or with the same opportunities or with the same uh, entitlements or resources. So, treating everyone equally in an equal society will lead to just outcome, but treating everyone equally in unequal society will not lead to the just outcome. So, therefore, the substantive theory of justice argues about not just a just principle or procedure of justice, but also the just outcome or the just result of that theory. So, emphasize on how to get just result by applying just procedure like fair allocation of resources and how a society ought to work in order to achieve and also maintain justice in the society. So, there is in roles we will discuss constant need of redistribution. So, in the society there always will be the concentration of wealth or the resources and inequalities. Now, there is a role of a state to devise a mechanism which will constantly redistribute the concentration of wealth and resources and to ensure that everyone should have maximum equality or maximum opportunity. If such a uh, difference is required, then it should be in the least disadvantaged people. So, these are some of the things which we will discuss. So, the point in substantive theory is not just to have merely a procedure of just distribution or uh, just theory, but also to focus equally on the just outcome and more so uh, that um, justice is not merely about formulating a theory or to achieving a justice once and for all, but it is a kind of constant process of maintaining or ensuring justice to everyone, to every generation in the society and so on. So, the substantive theory of justice is about fair distribution of goods and these goods are like wealth, income, opportunities to all people despite of their differences in social position and economic status. So, those differences should not be uh, determining in the opportunities that is available to individual or the resources that is available to the individual. It equally emphasizes on the fair principles, so the just procedure of uh, distribution and its objective is to establish a social system by ensuring fair distribution of goods. Although uh, his theory is regarded as procedural theory of justice, John Rawls concept of justice as fairness could be also regarded as a substantive theory. 
Rawls emphasized on equality in the society as a virtue and the whole purpose of a political order or the state is to ensure that equality is maintained and to maintain that he uh, developed two theory of justice which we will discuss. So, uh, justice is the fundamental political virtue in the society. However, he argued that any deviation from this principle of equality is justified if that is for the benefit of the least will of section in the society. So, he argued that to ensure uh, substantive justice uh, in the society requires not just the um, adher adherence to the principle of equality, but also it sometimes requires certain preferential treatment or some deviation from this principle of equality. Now, those preferential treatment and deviation from this principle of equality is justified only and only when it is in the benefit of the least will of sections in the society and not otherwise. So, uh, he argued uh, that natural talents and social position should be used to make everyone and not just one or few talented or socially economically well of uh, people, but everyone. So, that is the urge for creating a society which is more just or egalitarian, which provide equality to everyone, every single individual or member of that society and not to few or a selected uh, group of individuals. So, natural talents and social positions should be used to make everyone's life better off or for others benefit in society rather than merely benefiting oneself. So, in the uh, libertarian or the procedural theory of justice, we have seen that the individual entitlements is based on his or her choice or decisions that he or she makes previously. And if such decisions or choices lead to different entitlements, those entitlements are just. So, for them the justice is a matter of individual and not of the society. So, the objective should not be to create a, um, a kind of um, condition uh, or justice is not something that is about uh, related to the society, but it is the individual matter and the purpose for um, justice is to ensure maximum liberty and freedom and autonomy to the individual to develop his talent and accordingly um, uh, get uh, differential or, um, or unequal um, uh, entitlements depending upon his or her capabilities and talent. In contrast to that, we see that there is a kind of moral urge for not just ensuring that talent and social position should be used to maximize the benefit or the entitlements of few, but for everyone in the society and that is something which is moral, which is a normative, a priori kind of approach to this whole question of justice. This we will discuss when we will discuss this idea of justice as fairness in Rawls in the subsequent slides, but here the Rawls can also be then seen as a theorist who also argued for a substantive theory of justice and not merely a procedural theory. However, his emphasis remain about um, developing or formulating a theory which can be applicable to uh, every society or every uh, context and not to a particular specific uh, context. So, he did emphasize on developing a procedure or a just theory of justice, but his um, intentions or his objectives was not uh, limited to procedure alone, but to create a society which will be a more egalitarian and equal society. So, the substantive justice is grounded on application of just procedure, which intend to produce a substantive outcome or result for everyone in the society. Therefore, substantive justice focuses on just allocation of resources, benefits or burdens it requires a procedure with an objective to ensure fair and just allocations of resources. It also requires responsible agents like individuals, group of individuals, public institution and state to ensure 
that justice or the allocation of resources are done in a just and fair manner. Now, we move on to the second part of our lecture today that is Rawls conception of justice as fairness. Rawls in his book A Theory of Justice conceptualized theory of justice as fairness. Now, this idea of justice as fairness is based on the basic tenets of the procedural theory of justice. So, as I was saying the Rawls concern was to arrive at a theory of justice which will lead to uh, um, uh, substantive outcome or to create a society which will be more, uh, more just, more egalitarian, which will provide maximum autonomy and freedom to every individual in that society. So, to create that kind of society, to provide that kind of opportunity to every single member of the society, Rawls conceptualized uh, this theory as fairness, which equally emphasized upon the end results or outcome to create an egalitarian and just society. The premise of his theory is that a human being as a rational moral agent and both these points are very significant in his conceptualization of justice that the individual which is rational, but also a moral individual and this moral individual will also have a sense of justice which is innate. So, even we will discuss it in the veil of ignorance, the individual being by nature is rational and also a moral agent that uh, is uh, the base or the um, premise on which he or she develops some moral or uh, normative judgments and course of action. So, uh, the premise for this theory of justice as fairness is based on the idea of human being as rational or moral agent, therefore, would choose a principle of justice that would be inconsistent with the distributive theory of justice. So, Rawls talks about the distribution of primary goods. So, uh, here he tries to combine uh, a procedural and the substantive theory of justice and also the idea of individual as uh, the autonomous, rational, moral being on the one hand, but also that individual is the part of the larger society or the larger community and therefore, he has some obligation, some responsibility towards this idea of uh, distribution of some resources. So, the, thus the main focus of his theory is distribution of the benefits or what he calls primary goods. So, in Rawls we need to understand while he is arguing for the distribution of the primary goods, he is not arguing for conceptualizing and defining what is good for the individual. Now, for what is good and what is desirable, what one should aspire to become should be left with the individual to decide or to make decision about. But certain primary goods or resources must be made available to everyone in the society and therefore, the distribution of resources in roles is about the primary good, not about the good conception or what is good for the individual that should be left. So, there is a kind of uh, a balancing act between this. Uh, uh, a state taking the responsibility of not just providing, but also determining what is good for the individual on the one hand in the kind of authoritarian, totalitarian state and on the other hand the absolute minimalist state without any consideration to the uh, responsibility of distribution or redistribution and so on. So, the roles is trying to uh, balance uh, between these two extremes of leaving individual to his or her fate and to uh, interfering in the every sphere of individual life. So, uh, Rawls theory of distributive conception of justice is about distribution of goods, not about conceptualizing or determining what is good for every individual in the society. So, individual has the autonomy in determining what is good for him or her. But a state has a role to ensure that the primary goods or the resources are available to every member in the society. What are those primary goods according to Rawls is that liberty, the maximum liberty should be made available to everyone. Then the opportunity 
which should not be limited to few or the selected groups, but to everyone, income, wealth, self-respect and not having any scope for envy. So, to create a just society it is necessary that uh, the entitlements or the acquisition of property or the status of individual is not envied by the others. It can only be done when such acquisition, such status is seen as just by others or everyone in, in the society. So, there they will cherish and not envy the others um, status or others entitlements or property and so on. So, uh, these primary goods like liberty, opportunity, income, wealth, self-respect and not having any scope of any scope for envy is something which should be distributed to everyone. So, Rawls argues that these goods should be distributed equally among all the members of the society. However, any deviation, deviation in the sense of making some preferential uh, 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 treatment or to do some preferential um, uh, distribution to a society, uh, a section of society is justified only when, when it is rationally explained. So, the uh, principle of justice requires equal distribution of primary goods among all the members of the society. However, if some deviation has to be there, it must be uh, rationally explained or justified. And why that, uh, that should be rationally explained? is based on the premise that individual is a rational or moral agent and that requires uh, the theory to be uh, rationally or morally uh, convincing or justifiable. So, as a procedural theory, Rawls pointed out that justice can be achieved through following a just procedure. That is an emphasis on uh, formulating or uh, developing a just theory which will lead to just outcome. And that is a kind of universal approach in uh, his conceptualization of uh, uh, theory as justice, which he uh, modified, uh, for which he also faced many criticism, which we will discuss in the uh, next class. But here we uh, have to understand in this text a theory of justice. His idea of justice as a distributive concept is uh, that, that it should be based on certain procedure which can be universally applicable without any consideration to a particular uh, context or society. So, the Rawls theory of justice is egalitarian and he argues that theory of justice should be based on the notion of equality as we have discussed. So, the Rawls theory is based on an abstract hypothetical idea of original position, which he calls the veil of ignorance. Now, uh, the way we arrive at this principle of justice is based on this uh, hypothetical uh, consideration of individual which uh, Rawls uh, talks about, which he calls original position, where the individual is abstracted from his or her actual social conditions of living and kept in a condition where he is or she is ignorant about his social positions, about his class, about his other personal, individual and collective attributes and lives in a condition of uncertainties as they uh, do not know what would be the uh, status if such veil is uh, removed. So, uh, uh, the premise of uh, arriving at this just theory is uh, based on this idea that individual is abstracted from his actual uh, living status to an hypothetical situation which he calls the veil of ignorance. So, people in this original position is ignorant about their social status, position or class or any kind of discrimination that exists in the society. So, in this state of original positions or veil of ignorance, the individual is not aware of his status, his positions, his class or any other discriminations that exist in the society. However, 
Rawls pointed out that individuals are aware of the basic or the elementary knowledge of economics, psychology and most importantly a sense of justice and other primary goods. Individual in this veil of ignorance although will, uh, would not have any particular vision of good life, but they would all be interested in maximizing the primary goods like rights, liberty, power, opportunity, income and other goods that we have discussed. So, in this original position or what Rawls call a will of ignorance, individual may not be aware of um, what constitute good life, but they all uh, uh, would be interested in aversing the risk and maximizing the primary goods for the every uh, member in the society. This is so because none of the individual in the state of will of ignorance would know what would be their actual status in the society when the will is uh, removed and therefore, fearing that they themselves may end up as worse off sections in the society, they would choose a principle that would maximize the opportunity and good of worse off. So, the idea is that individual in that will of ignorance are uncertain about their actual condition in the society once the will of ignorance is removed. Now, if that is done and if they are unsure about uh, their condition in the society, they will devise a mechanism which will benefit or which will maximize the primary goods of those who are the worst of, because they may fear that they themselves may end up as the worst of section in the society. So, the principle of justice uh, argues or require that the individual as a risk averser will uh, develop a mechanism which will be in the benefit of the worse of in the society and that is the premise in uh, this uh, hypothetical idea of will of ignorance. So, in this hypothetical situation the individual would adopt for the least disadvantageous or the least harmful procedure of distribution of goods in the society. So, since Rawls believe that individuals in that state of ignorance have a sense of justice. So, they are not like tabula rasa or blank do not have any idea. So, they do have even in the veil of ignorance when they are unaware of their actual status in the society or the discrimination that prevails in the society, yet they have some innate uh, sense of justice or basic economy or the psychology and so on. So, this uh, sense of justice according to Rawls is the source of their moral judgments and motivations. So, this idea of individual being not just a rational person, but also a moral person is very significant and that moral or a sense of justice is the source of moral judgments and motivation in individual. So, the deliberation on these sets of moral judgments and motivations will lead to what Rawls calls a state of equilibrium. Now, different sets of individual uh, with their sense of morality may not necessarily be uh, automatically will have a same set of moral judgments or moral uh, decisions. These moral judgments or decisions may be at conflict with each other or different sets of individual will have often contradictory set of uh, moral judgments or uh, decision. Now, in that condition the moral individual not just being moral, but also rational will deliberate, will reflect on those moral uh, uh, set of judgments or decisions and will arrive at a state where there will be a kind of equilibrium and that equilibrium will remove the inconsistency in the moral uh, decisions or moral judgments. Now, this process of arriving at that condition where the moral set of judgments are through rational deliberation uh, reach a state or lead to a condition where there will be a state of equilibrium, where they will all agree to certain moral general principle that would be a practical guide for the individual. But if there is some specific needs or if there is requirement for deviation that should have rational justification as well. So, this process is also called reflective equilibrium. Now, uh, individual in roles 
he argues that individual thus situated in a state of ignorance and still having an innate sense of justice would arrive at this following two principles of justice. These are also called equality principles or the difference principle of justice and they are the first principle talks about which we call equality principle of justice that each person should have equal rights to liberty or freedom and this equal right to liberty and freedom should be maximum for every individual with similar liberty or freedom to others. So, that is the equality freedom that a state should ensure that everyone should have free and equal uh, rights and liberty to the maximum which is available to the other members in the society. The second principle which is about difference principle which talks about social and economic inequalities are to be arranged so that they are both benefits to the least will of or more precisely if it is in the greatest benefit of the least advantage sections in the society. The B of this social and economic equalities attached to the offices and job positions are open to all under condition of fair and just equality and opportunity. So, the difference principle talks about two sub uh, principle uh, where 2A is about if some inequalities in the treatment is to be done, then it should be done on the condition when it benefits the least well of or more precisely the greatest benefit of the least uh, advantage sections in the society. The B 2B principle talks about that offices and job positions are open to all and not few or selected groups, but to all under the condition of fair or just equality and opportunity. So, the access to a job or the public offices are made available on the principle of uh, this fair equality or opportunity or equality of opportunity and so on. Now, in this uh, principle of justice, it is uh, arranged in a priority wise and which we call lexical priority. That means, these two principles are arranged in a specific order, which we call the lexical priority. That means, he refers to a specific procedure to be followed for the implementation of these principles. So, these two principles of justice while following and implementing must follow certain sequence or certain priorities. These priorities are that the first principle should be implemented before the second. So, the preference or primary emphasis should be given to the first principle that uh, talks about that uh, each person should have equal rights to liberty or freedom with similar liberty to the others. So, states should ensure that individuals should have equal rights or maximum equal rights to liberty and freedom. The second principle, the 2B that talks about equal opportunities or fair equality must come before 2A. So, before the state uh, go for the preferential treatment, a state must ensure the free and equal opportunity to offices and job positions. So, thus Rawls talks about a procedural theory of justice with some sequence which we call lexical priority. These principles if implemented properly will ensure justice as fairness. So, justice in Rawlsian concept is not uh, certainly is about a procedure or just procedure, but it also equally put emphasis on the just outcome or to create a society which, uh, which uh, uh, will be a fair society or a egalitarian society or a just society. So, the equality is the basic fundamental social virtue in the Rawls and conception of justice. Of course, there are many critique to Rawls which we will discuss. So, in the Rawls and conception of justice, once again we need to uh, think about some of the things like it is a, uh, a distributive concept which talks about distribution of primary goods and not really to determine what is good itself. It should be left for the individual. So, individual has the autonomy to uh, define what is good. 
The second Rawlsian conception of justice is based on the idea that uh, individual will arrive at this situation when they are abstracted from their actual social condition and put in the veil of ignorance, where they will have a sense of justice and through that sense of justice they will arrive at certain procedure, certain principle of justice through deliberation where there will not be any inconsistencies in the moral preferences or moral judgments. And there he talks about these two principles, equality principle which should be always given uh, preference to and if there is some deviation or some uh, preferential treatment or move away from this equality, then it must be justified only on the grounds when it meets uh, the principle of equal opportunity to job and uh, public offices and if that is in the benefit or the in the greatest benefit of the least disadvantaged sections in the society. So, these are some of the uh, ideas about um, uh, conception of justice as fairness. Uh, on this uh, you can refer to some of these books which is mentioned in this uh, slide. Uh, in the next lecture, we are going to discuss some of the uh, criticism to uh, John uh, Rawls uh, theory of justice, then we will pick up different approaches to justice like feminist, communitarian, capability approach and so on. So, that is all for today, thanks for listening.